Hey everybody, what's going on? Brian back here with another short video. I'm just making up a, a little quick one here. It's not really getting into too deep of a project. Um, at the club, uh, at our last meet, I had one of the members just give me one of their trains to say, hey, is there something you can uh, do with this? He installed the STH-164D. Seen my latest videos there and um, he had some issues with uh, the speaker and everything. It was giving him a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and give him my, uh, the one that I took off from my last project there. We'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, one thing I just want to pull out. Um, we just got through Christmas and uh, Christmas is one of the, the biggest times where uh, you see those tangerine boxes, like the wooden boxes with the oranges in them uh, or mandarines. I don't know what anyone calls them anymore. Oranges. Um, they're a little bit of a money saver for uh, in the hobby of like say model railroading or different things like that so you see them when they're in the box and this one here I've already kind of started taking apart um, I've discarded that because that's not what I want but on them have all these pieces of wood like really thin nice you know pretty straight pieces of wood and it's definitely a little saver like a little tip uh, money saver wood's not cheap anymore everything's getting so expensive and when you can save a dollar any way you can that's definitely a way they come in different sizes so I've been saving them for the last couple of years I've got a huge stack of this and I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to use for it but I know for one day it's going to come in handy um, they come with the, the little brackets excuse me the, the brackets and they're wooden too that hold the whole box together and actually my one of my little recent projects uh, putting all my wiring together to kind of make a, an op, um, a programming kind of setup um, I'll show you here so as everyone knows um, I, I ended up getting the PR3 and what I was doing was having to keep disconnecting the PR3 uh, hooking it up to the track and then unhooking it and hooking it up to my Zephyr uh, and then back and forth to kind of keep it, uh, you know, going checking out what I've done so far. So what I did was using my own desk and actually uh, I had the CD storage spot here that I never used. Um, put a plate on there, ended up getting a, a switch so I could hook up the Zephyr into the switch. The PR3 is hidden in the desk so you don't ever see that. Although I did leave enough wire in case you ever have to pull it out to hook up a local net cable or something. And all I have to do is just switch it back and forth. Uh, so I can do it. So uh, I, I was going to put a piece of track right here So it was there constantly and I'm like, well, I don't really want to put a track there and have it in my way So I wanted to make it so I could just lay the track here at any point and quickly hook it up to some connectors So what I did was take one of these pieces of wood that I was talking about Actually glued it to the desk here painted it black so it blended in a little nicer I uh, got some like those speaker connects Put it right here drilled right through my desk hooked the wires up like ran them underneath the desk got that to the switch as well so now it's simple i just put the uh track right here hook the cables up whenever i want and i'm ready to do some programming or, or just make sure everything's running right and it's uh keeping the wires out of the way and again just another one of those like free pieces of wood i got from the the box there and uh came in handy so it's just a tip you know to keep a, a hold of different things because they're all good for uh, uh, doing some modeling um, anything helps any little uh, thing that you can get for uh, doing the uh, uh, model railroading or anything at that point anyways moving on um, so what I want to do is uh, this is the train right here an IHC it's a, a steam train I'm uh, gonna go ahead. He's got. He's like. He's already done the hard part. He's he's uh, installed and everything. The speaker just didn't work. I was playing with it at the uh, at the club, and uh, we, I, I wired it up. The wires were all coming off. The solder, like the wires broke off the off the capacitor, and everything. So I, I did them all up there and then put it on the track, and it didn't work. And I'm like, geez, scratching my head. I have no idea. So I said, I'll take it home, see what we can figure out. And uh, I uh, found out that it was the speaker that's gone bad. So uh, what we're gonna do put the speaker in there but what I'm going to show you is these lovely little speakers that you get uh, from uh, like these come on the STH-164Ds also on the sound bugs um, and they don't come with a baffle or an enclosure or anything so the easiest way to make a baffle for one of them is going into grandma's cabinet medicine cabinet or or, or even going down to your local pharmacy they might uh, have some of these lying around that they don't need just taking a pill bottle 
and uh, getting the right size, the one for the speaker. So this one here is gonna be fit and perfect. And uh, what I did is cut the end off so it's a sealed enclosure. And you take the speaker and we're gonna glue it right in there. Now, I have tons of room to play with here. You might have to adjust your thickness of your enclosure, but I'm gonna be putting this in the tender for, uh, for my buddy there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's as simple as doing that and you're gonna get twice the amount of sound out of this speaker here. So if you're ever wondering, again, trying to save money, how to, to make an enclosure, simply just find an old pill bottle there and uh, you're good to go. Now to get it the same thickness, like a pill bottle, you can't just take a saw at it, cut it. I mean, if you have a, a band saw, then you're pretty much good to go. But for me, I don't have many of the tools. So what I did was I built a jig, again, using one of these pieces of wood. And uh, going back over here, what I did was, I, uh, I put the thickness of how thick I wanted it going along there and then I screwed this nice and tight to my uh, my desk there and then try it with one hand here I, I held a knife an exacto knife flat against the edge here held this right against the piece of wood so I was gonna have the same thickness all the way around and I just kept twisting it holding my blade against it and uh, eventually sliced all the way through resulting in the calf that it's nice and even and it's gonna make a nice enclosure so what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and uh, flip that around so I can see myself there we go and uh, gonna install I don't know I'm thinking just gonna glue it in there and uh, get the wires all soldered onto this guy get rid of the old speaker it's garbage it's no good and uh, we'll be good to go take some two-way tape fit that on there the thing about these trains is when you put the it back together, it uh, it's sealed right in there, and it's not uh, getting the sound out. So you could take like a really fine, or take your pin vise or something, drill a whole bunch of holes in the top or something, have the speaker facing up, or it, same thing uh, pointing down. I might do it just uh, pointing down because he's got the decoder and everything on the bottom of it. I'll have the point. It'll turn out nice. Anyway, we'll put this all together, and we'll see how it sounds on the track. Okay guys, so uh, I got it all put back together. I spent some time on it last night. This is the next day now. Um, but uh, put it all back there, got the speaker in there. It's mounted uh, on the top here, facing down. I'm not gonna do any drilling in this tender. Um, with it being uh, it's not mine, I'll let him decide what he wants to do with that. But I mean, as of right now, it's got some decent volume. I mean, it's uh, not too bad. It's got its bell there. Um, I believe this is uh, just the the stock SDH-164D sound that it came with. I didn't do any changing with that. Um, you can hear it there. He obviously has his uh, CV set the way he wants them, so I'm not doing much changing. But what I am going to do is I'll flip it over to my programming. And if I just put this up here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see much, but I'm just going to go on Decoder Pro. That's Decoder Pro right there. And, ah, you can't really see it, but. I'm gonna change his bell ring rate. I'm gonna change it down to one, because it sounds like it's kind of fast. We can always change it back if he doesn't like it. And I'm gonna just turn the master volume up just a little bit. I don't wanna go too much, but uh, we'll take it to, I don't know, we'll try 12. And, Everything else, the ball, you can turn that up, the bell volume, horn whistle volume's turned right up. Um, and we'll save them and see what it sounds like. There we go, all done. So let's just go back over. It's a little louder there. So anyways, I hope he's happy with it. This is just a simple uh, how-to video how to make a simple little speaker box and uh, This is the final result with the round speaker in there and it doesn't sound too bad So hopefully he enjoys this and uh, we'll see you next time
Something uh, that I've never mentioned that makes life a lot easier for when uh, you're a person who's doing your soldering or something and uh, you got solder in one hand and you got the wire in the other hand and you're trying to solder to something. The thing about solder is when you solder it up, you have to uh, put the solder on there and let the solder cool before you really move it around. Um, thank you to my brother. Thanks, bro. Um, he picked me up this for Christmas. It comes with a magnifying glass on there too, but uh, I find it was kind of a little getting in the way for just uh, holding the wires there. I'm sure I'll be able to use it for like doing something like those really small LEDs that I was telling you about in my last video. Um, but these here make a, a, anyone who's soldering uh, life's way easier. You can hold one wire there, hold two wires. You have hands free, and this stands nice and heavy, so it. Uh, it stands there, won't move on you, so when you do your soldering, put your wires on there, it'll cool off before you're able to move it and you won't have any worries. So definitely a must for when you're doing some soldering. I just wanted to throw that out there.